Godspeed and party on. How about UFC uh, 126 this weekend? Pretty stacked card. I mean, I'm, I'm more excited for this card than I've been for any UFC for a while, I would say. And uh, how do you see those fights unfolding? Oh, yeah, it's going to be hard. You know, it's, uh, Belfort could take this one, man. He really can. I mean, his hands are better than uh, uh, Anderson, but the thing, uh, Anderson's mind is better. If Vitor shows up uh, mentally good, he's a very hard guy to beat. He's way too fast for him also. But, uh, you know, he has very good accuracy. He, hits, uh, he lands the punches where he wants them to land. And, um, yeah, it's, that, it's a hard fight. It's going to be a hard fight for Anderson Silva. Yep. Only a mental case. If, 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 if Vitor breaks mentally, well, then, yeah, then Anderson is going to take this one. How about uh, Jones versus Bader? We got two up-and-comers there. Uh, both very good wrestlers. Jones got the long reach on him. How do you see that one? You know, that is such a hard fight to call. But... You know, I'm 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 a big John Jones fan. You know, I did something with him a long time ago at the IFL already, and uh, and then later on I realized that oh my God, that was that was with him, and the way he comes up, the way he presents himself. But Bader also, he's also same thing. He's a really nice guy, good person. Both guys feel like it. I guess the best man's gonna win here. But you know, every time when they throw a wrestler in front of Jones, and everybody says the wrestler is better, he takes care of those guys like it's nothing. So you know, if this pattern keeps on going, then I I, I said it when I saw Jones fight like the first two fights in the see this guy's going to be the champion definitely I, I fully agree rich franklin and forrest griffin i was actually a little surprised that they put bader and jones against each other when they had those two legends also going against each other i figured maybe they'd put each up and comer against one of the older school you know proven yeah. got proven veterans yeah right now then yeah yeah that's a good one it, it, it works out both ways if you think about it but uh wow yeah that's going to be a tough fight forrest griffin every time when i when I see him, I say, how can he be 205? Did you ever see the guy? Mm. He's huge. And I go, oh, I, every time it surprises me. Then he says, Rich Franklin. And I, I think about Rich's build, and I go right away, that's the same weight class. <laughs> but it is. It really is. When you spar with him, he's, he's a giant. Uh, this is going to be a good fight. It's going to be a tough fight because uh, Griffin is not going to quit. And... Um, yeah, come on. <laughs> as, as a fighter for yourself, we know Forrest has had a really long layoff here. Uh, it's been over a year. How, how does that affect you as a fighter? Uh, we always see guys seem to struggle when they have a long layoff. No, dude, I, it, it, didn't, it didn't for me at all. I, I felt the best I've ever felt. And I think it's weird, actually, when people say that. because. But then again, I hear people who spar two times a week or I talk to a guy, a main guy, a really good guy. I'm not going to mention names here. And, they, and um, they, they were talking about sparring, going hard. And he says, oh, Dad, uh, we do that on Fridays. And I, I say, excuse me? He says, we do that on Fridays. So I start laughing. I say, what do you mean on Fridays? He says, what are you laughing? I say, I mean, you're joking, right? This is your, you're sparring one time a week uh, hard on Friday. Yeah. I say, he says, what do you do? I say, we do it two times a day. <laughs> we go hard. I mean, that's, that's what fighting is. And if you do that, then there is no ring rust because you're sparring. That's what you're doing. At a certain moment, you're at a level that you can't get pretty much any better anymore. You can only get better at reflexes and, and, and coming up with new setups for, for submissions or, or, or for, for knockout combinations. You know, but stamina-wise, you're going to be there. Sure, you want to drill a few things and you want to keep on doing those things, but you got to spar. It's like when you're going to run, you're going to run. When you're going to swim, you're going to swim. You're going to fight, you got to fight. And, and, and that's the trick to doing this. So, no, I never got that ring rust. What do you think? I know you have a lot of uh, experience in Japan. Now they're bringing over Kid Yamamoto. It'll be his first fight in the UFC. He's taken on a, a good wrestler, Demetrius Johnson. I feel that's a pretty tough matchup for him. How do you see that going? Yeah, Demetrius Johnson is unbelievable. I mean, that guy is all over the place. So explosive. It's, uh, yeah... That's going to be a problem for him, you know, and, and you go right away because Demetrius, yeah, okay, we, we knew him from the WC and he's new kind of for the people who only watch the UFC. But, um, you know, yeah, welcome to America, right, <laughs> to fight a guy like that. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see, you know, he's, uh, he's got to take it to the ground, he's got to control him, that's what Kid Yamamoto does, right? So let's see if he can do that with uh, Demetrius Johnson. But those guys nowadays, man, they get up and they have the fence. In Japan, they have the ring, you know, they can use the fence to get up, you can do that in the ring. So it's going to be hard to keep him on the ground. Uh what about Brock Lesnar, Dos Santos being in the tough show? Uh, obviously, Kane shelved with the injury. We talked, last time I talked to you, actually, was at the EA Sports right before the fight with Kane, and you were talking about him shying away from punches. That's exactly what you told me was he was shying away from punches against Carwin, and he did the same thing against Kane. So I'm sure you were a little disappointed in that. 
I was very disappointed because, you know, you're kind of hoping that it's a fluke the first time and that it's, uh, you know, maybe something happened. Maybe he got stabbed in the eye one time or something uh, before this. Or... No, that was a shame. That's a shame to see somebody, you know. Uh, I know that when, when a lot of people are watching that fight, you know, and, and good strikers who always been saying that nobody in mixed martial arts knows how to strike, and then they see a world championship fight like that, and I go like, yeah, you know. Can blame them wrong because they're right. They they that that's horrible. You can't have that. That's that's literally nobody is allowed to hit him in training. I'm pretty sure that that's that's a rule there. And um, and because if it's not, then he's got to stop fighting right away because then he has absolutely no talent whatsoever. So it's either that or or nobody's allowed to hit him. So uh, and and it's a shame. I I, I expected. Brock coming back sooner, like, give me a fight, do me this. But it's like he doesn't want to, you know. I don't think it's a good sign. Does that mean that he's mentally broken now? You know, I mean, that's, right? I mean, if I would be handled, man, handled like that, then, you know, I would say, okay, I, I, I'll be on the phone with Dana. I said, listen, man, I got to go in as fast as I can because I need to straighten this stuff out, you know. I got to go. Also, I, I would go to take a plane trip to Holland, and, and I'm pretty sure if uh, Brock calls Golden Glory and he says, listen, what, can I train here for six months? They say come right in, you know? And if you want to learn <laughs> to strike, well, you go to these guys. They have a gym there. If you got Sam Shield, Peter Earth, Alistair Overeem, I mean, you keep on throwing out the name Saki, whatever, and they all train together. You know, that's some team right there, Musashi. So, uh, yeah, he should do that and then come back because now being as a coach, you know, what, what is he going to teach him? See, that's what he's going to get. That, that's why I thought it was like Dos Santos, we know, you know, he can teach. But right now, everybody, they kind of lost respect for him. You know, it's uh, what they always say, that's tapping on strikes. You don't want to do that. You know, there's like as a, a fighter, it's very hard for, um, how do I say this? Nice. <laughs> As when you when you're a, fight, a lot of fighters, they have too much pressure because the pressure is on when they lose a fight. All the people after the fight, or the people in the audience, will tell them all oh, what they did wrong. You know, you should have done this, you should have done that. These people never train. You know, but for some reason, for these guys, that's a lot of pressure to deal with, and that's why a lot of them can't de handle that pressure. Like for me, I really don't care about those people, you know, because they don't know what they're talking about. I care about my professional guys, my, about my colleagues. Now, if you're a fighter and you give everything you have, you cannot lose respect in front of, an, the, in, in front of the eyes of a other fighter. You cannot. I know this. You can lose eight times in a row. It doesn't matter. If you fight, you fight. Everybody respects you. Once you start tapping on strikes, now you lose respect for the eyes of the fighter. And I don't think that as, as a fighter yourself, you, that's something that's a hard, hard pill to swallow. You need to get that back because that's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. You know, if I would know that other people would think about me like that, other fighters would think about me like that, that would be horrible. That would, uh, that I, I get physically now emotional about just by thinking that because I don't think if I could handle that. Yep. So you think that Brock will be able to change that by the time he fights Dos Santos in a few months or do you see Dos Santos uh, getting an uppercut and uh, just putting him to sleep? Oh, that's, that's, again, that's what you're going to do. You know, he has Pat Berry uh, in his corner, and, and Pat didn't want to say anything about it, and he was not allowed to talk about it. I said, Pat, you don't need to tell me. You're not allowed to hit him. I know you're not. You know, he says, I can't say anything. I said, well, I can see. I can see. I got my eyes. Otherwise, like I said, the guy has no talent otherwise. It's one of the two, and I do think that he has talent. I always said, he's a freak. He's strong. He's got everything. He needs a guy pummeling him. He needs to be in a, in, in, in a, in a shark tank with, with two other guys like Pat Barry coming at him the whole time, hitting him, hitting him. And, and listen, a Pat Barry is the kind of guy who can come at you but won't injure you. He's got that capability because he's got such a good typing. Let the guy go. Let the guy, he's not going to hurt you, you know. He's going to be okay. He's going to help you. He's there to help you, you know. And then and get some more of those guys. Get him used. Put him up against the wall. And now start hitting him. Bring the hands up and you start slow. Boom, boom, boom. Slowly but surely, keep the face muscles relaxed. Look at your opponent. And you're only standing here against the wall because you can't go away and simply block minimum movement those punches and keep the muscles relaxed. Once you see start squeezing, stop the drill. Start slower again. The muscles need to stay relaxed. Because if this is calm, everything works calm. A lot of people don't realize that when you, when you twitch in your hand, then you're telling your brain something is wrong. Because normally, if somebody throws something, that, that's an alert, you know? So that's this, something I do. 
<laughs> flinch. That's something a reporter does. Yeah, everybody, <laughs> yeah, when you go, whoop, like this, yeah, they just flinched. I would do that too. But it's a defense mechanism also. But there's two ways, you know, if you start flinching and you tell your body there's something wrong, while there is not something wrong, you start making panic reactions. And the panic reactions, I always may say, if your hands are here and suddenly you need, they need to be here, they go too fast up. Because if they're here, they only have to do this. But now, oh, oh I'm going to be too late. You're going to go fast. Now you're wide open. And then it goes up and down and up and down. That's the moment you want to clinch. That's the moment you want to reset in your brain, you know, and a lot of guys don't do that, and that's what he needs to do. He needs to do this drill, what I just said, that's what I do. That's a very simple drill with guys that I do here. Put them up against the wall, and you'll be amazed in three minutes. If I put you up against this wall, within three minutes, you're going to block punches, but coming at you like this, dang, 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 this speed, and you're going to block every single one of them in only three minutes. It's crazy. It works really fast if you do it the right way. Trip, trip, trip. Okay, and Godspeed, everybody. Godspeed and party on. Buena suerte y disfruten de las fiestas. Godspeed and party on.